Well, I want to welcome you to Ron Carpenter Television. I want to welcome you to our program today. Don't know what time it is that we'll be reaching you. I know we're in different time uh, spaces all over the world, but I'm just glad we're together. I'm glad we have this time together. And you know what? I'm going to be introducing a whole new series today. And uh, I bet you will be able to identify with this. I don't care how old you are, what gender you are, uh, what nation you're in, what background you come from, but relationships. Everybody has at least been stung, betrayed, hurt, left hanging, abandoned, something negative. Somebody has done something negative to everybody under the sound of my voice. So we come up with the title Ship Wrecked. In other words, relationships gone bad. How does God want us to manage our relationship? This isn't a marriage series. This isn't a dating series. It's not a group of messages for singles. It is literally, how did Jesus teach us to manage everyday relationships and the people that we interact with? Short-term relationships, long-term relationships. How do we meet? How do people earn your trust? What people do you let on the inside? What people do you leave at arm's distance? What are the boundaries that you draw? How do you stay with the boundaries you've drawn? Have I piqued your attention? All these things are going to be talked about in this relationship series, Shipwreck. I believe that the mismanagement of relationships is really why so many people are so broken. I have stated several times in this teaching series, I believe the proper management of relationships, i got to watch out, I'm about to preach, is the key to emotional health. Jesus had a lot to say about it. Let's dive in right now and see what that is. I'll see you in just a minute. If I went around this room today and said, what would you look for in a friend? I'm going to tell you, I don't care what generation. If they were 50 or if they were 15, this is what I'd hear. Someone fun-loving. Someone easygoing. Someone no drama. Someone that can make me laugh. Someone ambitious. Someone goal-oriented. None of that has to do with character. None of it. And so when you look for a best friend, you are in character assessment. And everything that everybody's looking for has nothing to do with character. It has to do with personality. I'm not getting no help whatsoever. Are y'all interested in this series? When you want a friend, you don't look for personality traits. You look for character traits. I can't tell you my weaknesses and my faults because you are fun loving. Because you might one day want to have fun with my fault. And the church has not been taught a lot about character assessment. When you ask people what they're looking for in a husband or a wife, they'll give you the same thing. They'll start listening personality traits. Proverbs 31 tells you what to look for in a wife. None of it has to do with personality. When you read 1 Corinthians 13, love, none of it has to do with feelings. None of it. None of it. Not one definition is a feeling. Oh, I just get all butterflies up in my stomach. Well, that butterfly going to fly out. What you going to do then? That butterfly usually will fly out once or twice during the honeymoon. <laughs> Tell your neighbor on both sides, I got a feeling this is going to be tough. Somebody, I heard somebody say it's already tough. He didn't even, it's already. <laughs> uh, verse 16. Now Jesus, this, here again, there's a principle. He is applying it to a certain kind of person which is teachers. But the principle remains no matter what the application. I've tried to always teach you that. A principle is a tr principle. Jesus has a certain group of people he's applying it to in this context. But it's still a truth that is applicable to every person. Listen to what he says. You will know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes? Or figs from thistles? Do I go to a thorn bush if I want a grape? It's amazing what you want, but where you go to get it. 
or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Let me tell you something. When you look for character, nobody can fool you consistently. Personality, you can fool me for a lifetime. Character, if it ain't there, they can't act like it's there alone. If they a liar, it's going to show up. Come on. What if, if they're kind, kindness is going to leak out of them. Whatever is truly there is going to leak out. Jesus said they cannot take a tree and fake you out with the fruit. If it's an orange tree, it's going to have an orange. If it's an apple tree, it's going to have an apple. So he says a good tree bears good tr- fruit. A bad tree bears bad fruit. Okay? Now, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The people that do not bear the fruit that God expects, you cannot give yourself to them in a confident relationship. Some of you have been taught by preachers, we love everybody. Yes, we do. I trust very few. Because God tells me to love you does not mean I got to trust you. I have to love you by the command of God. Your, my trust is earned. My trust is earned as you meet qualifications to be my friend. Some of you have no qualifications to be in your life. There ought to be all kind of qualifications you have for somebody to be in your life. Because relationships will directly affect your future just as much as anything else you do. I am preaching already. (laughs) Now, if we're looking for fruit, what kind of fruit are we looking for? Galatians 5, 22. Pretty familiar passage of scripture, but let's dig in it for a reminder of those who've heard it, for knowledge of those who don't. Really? Are you ready for this? But the fruit of the Spirit is love. (laughs) Joy, peace. Oh, I love when he rides his motorcycle. His hair just blows. Who it just gets me. Woo. Just give. Yeah, about two weeks you'd be wanting to be like Samson, cut his hair off in the night. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. In other words, will you love me when my cracks start showing? When the veneer is gone and I can no longer hide my flaw. Long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Let me say them again. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, (coughs) pardon me, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. So let's talk about these things for just a minute right here. So we've talked about number one, Jesus says, you'll know people by their fruit. If you are something, you're not bored if I just talk and teach. Can I just talk and teach? Okay. We done screamed and praised. Let me, let me, let me be a teacher. If you constantly have to tell me what you are, there is a high chance you aren't that. People that constantly tell me how much money they got only for me to find out they broke as Snyder's hound. (laughs) Debt up to their eyeballs. (laughs) Living one step ahead of a creditor. If you got to tell me you are Christian, that means your tree has not already shown me anything. So you're trying to convince me with your words that you are something that your tree is not bearing. If you are a Christian, I should have known it long before you ever told me. 
I should have seen peace, love, joy, long-suffering, kindness leaking out of your life, leaking out on other people, pouring out on those around you. Long before you ever confessed to me that you were a believer, I should have pegged you by the fruit that's on your tree. Well, I'm a, I'm a giving person. I'm a very giving person. I mean, I'm saying, you, you won't even give your kid a share of French fry with them. You, you said, you want me to look at your fruit but believe that you're something different. And some of you want somebody in your life so bad that you will lie to yourself about what you're actually seeing. You want to get married so bad, you will blind yourself to all the fruit that is hanging right there on the tree that is telling you, don't marry me, don't marry me, don't marry me, don't marry me, don't marry me. And then after you get married, you go to your mama and realize what she was telling you the whole time was true. It's going to be hard to preach this series, I can tell. You know what? I always say the same thing every time I hold one of these up. I believe the greatest investment you can make is an investment in your mind. Bishop Jakes, oh, I love him. He had a message called Head First. Wherever you go in life, you're going to go head first. If you came into this world, you were supposed to have come into this world head first. And wherever you want to go, you're going to have to take your head there first. If you want to right your relationships, you're going to have to go there in your head first. This is the full teaching of these little 28 minute segments that you get. Uh, I always teach in series and all the teaching series are always available to you at roncarpenter.com. You can go on the church website, you can go on my website, you can do whatever you wanna do or you can call right now that number on your screen and we'll make this available to you. Who knows, maybe you'd love to have all of it to archive and pull out whenever you'd like to. We'd like to put it in your hands. So go call now and we'll do our best to get it to you and we'll do the shipping and handling free, all right? Now let's get back to the message. Have people ask me, say, what do we call you? You want us to call you pastor or you want us to call you apostle or you just want us to call you by I said, call me like you see me. I'm not going to tell you what to call me. What do you see on my tree? Whatever you see on my tree, call me that. Okay. If you think if I'm pastor, do you call me pastor? If that's, the, if that's the fruit that hangs on my tree, I go over to the Imagine Center, half the men over there call me daddy. So evidently, they see some daddy fruit hanging on my tree, and they respond to me as one who may bring a clear word or one who may bring some truth or some clarity to their situation. They call me daddy. I, I enjoy that term as any other term anybody else has given. I don't care if you call me bishop, apostle. But that's not for me to tell you what to call me. It's for you to look at the fruit on my tree, and then you call the tree as you see it. If somebody's got to tell you what they are, you ain't examined the fruit for yourself. Why won't you examine the fruit and then you'll find out if the tree really is what it claims to be. I am preaching up a storm in this building right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now I'm heading somewhere. Stay with me. I'm not going to get through quite on time. I'll get through as fast as I can. Y'all the one that shouted for 50 minutes. You know I only had 90 and you shouted 50. So let, let, me, let me have some time here. Now, I've preached to you, it is critical. I did this back in What Makes a Man even last summer. It is amazing to me the response that has happened. The most, biggest selling series since we went on TV in 98. <coughs> what Makes a Man and all the women are buying them. Yeah. <laughs> Serious. And giving them to the, here, you need this. <coughs> It is critical that you understand the different kinds of relationships and the parameters that make it that kind of a relationship or the boundaries and then get the right person in the right category. When you begin to put expectations on a relationship it was not designed to give, you're going to get hurt. And some of you, those people that you got on your hate list, you don't need to hate them. You put yourself in a bad situation and they were never supposed to live up to your expectation. You, you don't go to work for support. Well, I don't, I don't want to work there. I never could find no friends. 
Who in the world ever told you going to work is the place where you find friends? Who made you that problem? Who told you? You know what work is for? You don't want me to talk plain. Can I tell you what work is? Pay me. Pay me. I traded my time, my energy, my gifts. Pay me. I'm not looking for counsel. I'm not looking for a best friend. I'm not looking for a deal. I'm not looking for a confidant. I'm not looking for a date. Pay me. Somebody just say, pay me. Ain't nothing carnal about that. Ain't nothing unholy about that. Oh, Ethel, he talking about money. Pay me. (laughs) You don't sleep with friends. You're putting, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Quiet in the house of the Lord. It's quiet in the house of the Lord. And you don't wake up with them either. Because you are making that relationship give you something it was never designed to give. A truckload of pain is headed your way. That relationship is not meant to operate outside of certain boundaries. You don't tell an acquaintance your secrets. You don't tell your problems to those who work for you. All problems go up. They never go down. You got a complaint, take it up. You don't take it down. Okay? Because those under you want to hear your problem so they can use it against you to have your job. Is this too real? Am I just being too real? There are many different relationships. Let me start talking about some of them. Constituents. Let's call them const. Because I'm scared I'll misspell constituents. Let's try it. Constituents. Is that it? U. E? E? That don't look right. Constitue. Well, it's got an E today. <laughs> These people are not for you. They are for what you are for. These people are temporary in nature and they come in and out of your life. These are the people that are drawn together for a cause. At your workplace, you may have been pulled out of your department, brought into a conference room. There's a new service your company wants to provide. There's a new product they want to make and they have brought you together. Y'all don't even know each other. You were brought together from seven different divisions of your company and you have been brought together for a common cause. These are your constituents. These are people that come together for a common accomplishment. I had people that are no longer at this church. I used to take it personal, but I understand how this works now. Why? Because they wanted to help me defeat racism. And so they were here. And as soon as the dam broke and the racism bars broke and we became a multicultural church, they weren't in to run, but they loved his cause. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And so this church has had many different seasons. Why? Because we've had many different causes. And we have people that come in and they appreciate the cause, but they were not meant to be connected to Ron Carpenter for life. Now that used to hurt very deeply. Why? Because I took it personal, not realizing that God intended these people to come and to go. And you got to understand, as soon as victory has been achieved, they usually move on. Then you have your comrades. Comrades, comrades has an R and an A. It has a D. E. S. Comrades, Julio, comrades. Comrades are against what you're against. 
We're against hunger. We're against homelessness. We're against gun violence. We're against, and they come together for a common enemy. There are countries that the United States don't even like, but they are coming together to fight a greater enemy. And they are comrades, even though they themselves are not friends. But a greater enemy now threats, so we are against the same thing, and we join forces. By nature, both of these are meant to be temporary, and they are meant to come and go. Your life has many seasons. God governs your life by seasons. And God will bring these kind of people in and out of your life as the seasons of your life changes, as the passions of your life change, and as what God does in your life changes. And you've got to understand that. But here's the one everybody wants. Everybody needs a, con is it confidant, D-A-N-T? Is that right? It is today. Y'all ain't helping me. These are the people that are into you. It's not about what you're for. It's not about what you're against. <clears throat> it's not about what you have. It's not about what you bring to the table. It's not about what you can do for them. It's not about your gift. It's not about your talent. They, like, they love you. Oh, Robert's 96 years old. One of the greatest men I've ever met told me, if I have five in a lifetime, I'm a blessed man. I'm going to be honest with you. If he would ask my generation, I'd say if you have two. And this is the thing that has everybody empty. We're not empty because of this. They come and go like the wind. This right here, this will leave you isolated. This will leave you depressed. And this will leave you with a void. And this will leave you empty. How do you know if you have a confidant? Because when you walk into the room and you tell them your victory, they will stop what they're doing. Hallelujah. And they'll put down their pen and they'll put down their paper. And all of a sudden, your victory just became the most important news in the room. When you come in with tears streaming down your face, they will stop their celebration to throw their arms around your neck and pull you in tight and begin to love on you. Because the Bible says that the real body of Christ, when one rejoices, we all rejoice. When one celebrates, we all celebrate. When one is in trouble, we're all in trouble. When one's in defeat, we all in defeat. Somebody who's really my confident, you're with me when I'm up, you're with me when I'm down. You're with me when I'm in trouble, you're with me when I'm not. Not. You with me when I've got a pocket full of money? You with me when I'm broke? You're not into what I'm fighting. You're not into what I'm against. You're not into what I'm for. You love me and care about God's destiny. Oh, my life. I have found good character in you. You have found good character in me. And I know when I tell you something, the only person that's going to know it other than me and you is going to be the Holy Ghost. And that's it. Somebody shout amen if you have one. If you don't, shout amen because God's going to give you one. Ow! And woe unto you if you make one of these your confidant. With a population of 10 million people, the Dominican Republic is the second largest Caribbean nation. Outside of its beautiful tourist areas lies an economy overwhelmed with unemployment, leaving many without food, shelter, or a means to provide for their family. We see the need to bring hope. Redemption for Dominican exists to extend a relentless reach by providing food, clothing, shelter, and a priceless hope only found in Jesus Christ. With your help, together we can change the lives of families in need through our generosity and prayers. We invite you to help us by praying for our missions team and consider becoming a monthly supporter for any amount you can contribute. Join us in bringing Jesus to the people of the Dominican Republic. Redemption for Dominican. Together, we can change our world. For more information, log on to our website at myredemption.cc. You know what I believe we are 
onto something right here. I believe we're breaking some ground up that uh, at might times may be a little painful, might, times might be a little challenging, uh, but I believe all together, if we can get our relationships in the right place, everything else will begin to fall into the right place. May God heal your damaged heart, your damaged soul. For those of you who have lost faith in other people, there are people that God can bring into your life that can be a blessing to you, I promise. I promise he's got those people. Well, I just want to shift right now and just thank all of our covenant partners. We always end with letting you know the financial needs that we have and also thanking those who have taken responsibility to help us meet those financial needs. I'm grateful for all of our friends, uh, some reaching all the way back to when we very first started. Uh, I don't want to show you any of that footage, but all the way back to 1998 when we started, some people have been with us that long. Thank you. Wow. We're grateful for you. And uh, we are about expanding the footprint of the gospel and just being eat up with a love for Jesus and wanting to spread it all over the world. We're, we're doing things through technology and television. We're doing things on the ground where we have foot soldiers. We've adopted basically the new country of the Dominican Republic. I need your help. I mean, we're gonna go down there, we're gonna do infrastructure. We have vision to go down there and do things that affect the economy, things that affect jobs, buy new buildings for the churches. Uh, we, we're taking containers down there full of medical supplies. We're taking dentists, taking doctors, taking medicine. Uh, we're going down there into third world countries and we're looking at maybe having medical clinics. All this is a part of the vision. I need your help. I've asked God actually for a thousand new people to rise up and be covenant partners who would just help with that. And uh, as you know, we always have more potential to reach more people through these screens than anything else we do. Would you consider being a covenant partner? Would you consider maybe a one-time gift? Whatever God will lay on your heart, I want you to obey Him, not me. I want you to feel this thing inside of you and respond to that voice that you're feeling, which is the voice of God. I promise you that we'll do everything we can to manage and be good stewards of your investment. And may God bless you richly for investing in His kingdom. I want you to know I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. We're periscoping. Go find out what that is if you don't know. And I would love to connect with you on a deeper level. All that's available to you. All of our products available online. But main thing is, I just want to let you know, we appreciate and we value you. We want to reach you and we want to teach you. In Jesus' name, I'll see you real soon. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry, and we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.